Good morning or good afternoon for those of you in Asia. This is Privateer FX coming at you uh, with a request from a few of our viewers and what I mean by managing core long or core short. This type of trading applies to trading around assets. This is not typically the type of trading we use in foreign exchange. Uh, foreign exchange is more irrational. As you all know, if you trade foreign exchange, it goes to the left, it goes to the right, often with no rhyme or reason. This type of methodology has to do with trading assets that we feel that because of free cash flow or reasons that we feel very secure about, the security is going to go up or going to go down. And in our case, normally it's just for securities that we think are going to go up. And one of the things we do with Privateer FX is we plow our foreign exchange profits into assets. In order to qualify as an asset at Privateer FX, it has to be what we call a never sell asset. In order to qualify as a never sell, by the title of it, you have to be comfortable with downside volatility. So you're not going to irrationally, based on price, jump out of an asset. Uh, we believe that the values behind the asset are significant enough in our belief system, so we're comfortable with downside volatility. Usually never sells come into, into our view as an index, it could be a global index. Right now we're trading Turkey, TUR as a never sell down here in this $30 area. Uh, when Brazil gets down to 20, EWZ, we play around with that. Here in front of me I have uh, AT&T. This qualifies as a never sell just because of the name, the infrastructure, and the dividend. So let me just show you what it looks like to trade core long AT&T in our asset book. A core long position usually is going to start after some sort of price depression. So AT&T, as you can see, everyone sort of knows, was trading between sort of 45 and 35 uh, for many, many years. But when it started trading down to 32, all of a sudden we became interested in it because the dividend then became 5%. And it's just so big and such a behemoth that we were like, okay, this is an asset that's not going away. It can enter the never sell list on a core long basis. And so what you're trying to do with core long is basically saying, I'm going to own this asset. And if it does just continue to collapse until 20 bucks, I'm still happy to own it. And for us, the 5% dividend gives us that reason that we're happy to own it. But your idea is basically it's probably not going to go below 30 bucks because of the dividend and because of a number of other factors I don't want to get into. I'm not an expert uh, on balance sheet analysis and free cash flow in stocks. Uh, but I do have my favorite assets that I like to hold and own for the long term. Uh, and basically, instead of using a bank account, we store our money in assets, hoping for long-term appreciation. The reason we trade core short, it just gives us more comfort. And the idea is basically something like this. So you're trying to buy um, AT&T below 35 bucks. You'll be 33 and a half bid for, I don't know, say, for the sake of it, uh, 100 shares. And then you're 32 and a half bid 100, you're 31 and a half bid 100. So let's say you have 300 shares at 32 and a half now. The idea behind this is, as you see appreciation, you usually like to see 10% appreciation, you sell 80 to 90% of your asset, and this then leaves you 10% or 20% of your asset with your average well, well below the current range. So in this case, if you sold 90% of your AT&T, say three bucks higher at 35.50, all of a sudden you have a position of AT&T with an average below 10 bucks, and then you just sit. 
becomes a never sell, your stop loss is zero. And then you do it again if it happens that it comes back down again. AT&T is a very good example. So you're selling in this 35 and a half area. As it goes to 38, you may say, oh shucks, I uh, wish I had the full position on. But again, this is long-term money for us. And so we sit here and go, well, if it comes back down to 32, we're going to do the same thing again. And so currently right now, we're, we're doing the same thing again. So mind you, we have 100 shares here with an average well below $10. Now we're adding another 300 shares here. 33 and a half, 32 and a half, 31 and a half, 32 and a half. Um, average, you can see on this move up here to 34, 48, wasn't quite high enough for us to start getting out of our stuff. Just kind of missed it. And so now we're sitting here just core long. As prices get back towards 35, we will be selling core. And if we're successful in this round, then we'll be long 200 shares again the average below 10 bucks. Add, rinse, and repeat. The reason we can do this, and the reason this works with assets and doesn't work as well with foreign exchange, is you have to have a belief in the asset, a very strong belief that number one, it's not going to go to zero, and you have to size it so it's a long-term asset, right? So we're not going to be buying 30,000 shares of AT&T with a 29.90 stop, even though we think that it's not going to go below 30, we do know irrational things happen in the market and we want to feel secure so we're never forced sellers or forced buyers in this case, in some cases if we're short a stock. You never want to be a forced buyer or forced seller. And this is a very conservative way. I would say a lot of people would call it maybe even an unprofessional way because you're limiting your upside with your sales but it's giving you peace of mind and peace of mind over the long term I've found outweighs massive leveraged alpha um, that you need say if you're running a hedge fund or if you're running a big prop book this is personal stuff and if you can gather these type of assets at these type of prices and just leave them not only are you getting yourself a nice dividend, but you're under no stress to be a forced seller of AT&T. If AT&T goes down to 18 bucks, it's fine. Our averages are going to be much lower than this $30 area, and we can survive that. And of course, you have to reassess from time to time. Occasionally, one of your never sells turns out to be a real dud. Um, but typically, uh, you know, your never sells are never sells. And, and you can look back on uh, TUR, which is the Turkish Stock Exchange, or EWZ, which is the Brazilian Stock Exchange. These things at times in their, in their lives look like they're going to zero, right? Take EWZ, a couple of years ago, prices below 30, it looked terrible. So we were buyers in this 30 area, we were sellers at 35. The second time we were buyers in this 30 area, we wore this all the way down to 17. But because our average was probably around 25 after the second, second purchases, and because it was an index, we were like, well, okay, this is fine. And then as we moved back up through 35, 36, we got out of two thirds of the position, so effectively, we own EWZ at around 10 bucks. We don't own a lot of it, but we own it, and we're happy with that ownership because we don't think EWZ is going to zero. Of course, the only way it could go to zero is if the currency, the, the real, did a Zimbabwe on us. So anyway, just sharing you a style of trading. Uh, this came to us later in our careers. We were obviously professional, all of us at Privateer were, were professional foreign exchange traders for all of our careers. Now, 30 years later, we're like, okay, if we don't want to buy any more, any more stuff, um, and we're heading into the second half of our lives, where are we going to store our profits? Uh, and this never sell method is a nice way and a safe way, a conservative way to build assets over time. Let's take Bitcoin. 
this has been a little bit tricky, um, but it's worked out for us. Same ideas. As you guys saw from the videos, we're 72, 62, 52 bid for Bitcoin. We've never been given 52s yet. And when you get your 72s and it goes up 10% to 82, you sell. And then you get your 62s. If it goes up 10%, you sell. You sell 80, 90% of the position. And all of a sudden you have some Bitcoin. So it's say you buy 10 coins per lot. You now own four, five, or you could buy 100 coins per lot, depending on your budget. But you have coins below the 2,000 mark. And so even though we're in a downtrend, we feel like we're not a forced seller. And we feel like because we really believe in Bitcoin, we're not going to have to panic if it does trade below 5,000. Anyway. Uh, it's pretty, I hope that's pretty clear on what we're doing. It's a certain style of trading that we use for assets. This is not tactical trading that we use in FX, which is kind of smash and grab, try and grab your profits, accumulate those profits. Anything you accumulate over what you need to live over the year, you should plow it into assets. This is what we do at Privateer. Um, for those of you beginning your careers, or for those of you in mid-career, or towards the end of your careers like we are, uh, this is us just sharing and saying this is a strategy you can implement. Tweak it a little bit, depending on your risk preference and your tolerance, uh, and use it for your benefit. Anyway, sharing is over. Uh, that is the idea of core short or core long. We're rarely core short, so if you want to be core short Tesla, you could do the same thing. The problem with being core short is, you know, there's really no ceiling for assets. Whereas, you know, core long, your worst, worst, worst case scenario is zero. Even if you're bearish Tesla, uh, which we are, Tesla could easily go to a thousand, and we recognize that, so it's a lot trickier position size must be much smaller um, one of the fun things about Tesla is it just moves around like a wild animal uh, so the volatility is kind of fun but it's we trade it very social amounts with the same idea you know we're kind of core short above 320 we're assuming this thing's not going to go to 500 uh, but even if it does we're not going to bet the farm on it and our averages will be well above 400 so we can kind of sit and try and wear shorts. But one thing on Tesla and one thing about shorting stocks that's completely different than saying being core long AT&T is you have to pay to be short Tesla. So not only do you have to have a good average, you have to live through the borrowing costs of the stock. Um, so I would recommend for most of you, use this strategy for core longs. If you love Bitcoin, great. If you love Google, any of the fangs that you love, none of which we love. Um, maybe you're, you know, we're more, we like stocks like Overstock and some weird ones that I don't expect you guys to be following so much, or REIT like Earn. Um, same idea. You see this thing come off, you, you accumulate it, sort of. 1050, 950, 850. Go, wow, the dividend is, is above 6%. It should trade in a range. If you can get your core long well below 5 bucks, you're probably going to be okay with a REIT. Even if there is a real estate crash or whatever happens, you're never going to be that force seller. Anyway, enough said. Uh, just sharing for those of you who have asked. I appreciate the inquiries. Uh, and good luck out there with your trading. Talk to you later.